Um, first, I would like to thank Ms. Jackie for um, giving us this opportunity to come and speak with us. Um, so good afternoon to everyone. Um, thank you for being with us today. Um, today we are pleased to welcome Ms. Jackie Rowe, a very special guest from Lake Charles. Um, Jackie is with Wallow Heck, and she is a navigator for um, Healthy Louisiana. And today she will be sharing with us her expert opinion on health insurance in the marketplace. This webinar is being recorded and all lines are muted. So please put your questions in the chat box. But we ask that you hold all your questions until the end of the webinar. With that said, I ask that you give your full attention to Ms. Jackie Rowe and help me welcome her. Ms. Jackie, take it Hi. away. Hi, everyone. Um, like China said, my name is Jackie Rowe. I'm a certified navigator with the Navigators for Healthy Louisiana. I, um, the agency I work for is called Southwest Louisiana Area Health Education Center. We're a nonprofit organization that does um, health awareness programs throughout the state. Um, one of our, uh, we're funded through federal and state grants. One of our federal grants is the Navigators for Healthy Louisiana, which we help assist consumers in um, navigating through the health insurance marketplace. With the current um, COVID-19 pandemic, we've um, experienced a lot of um, confusion and um, un unsure of how to handle um, if they lose their job-based coverage. And today I'm gonna go over um, some information that uh, could be uh, very useful to some of y'all uh, um, and answer some of y'all questions about what do you do if you lose your job-based health insurance. Um, as I said, if you have any questions going forward, um, just please leave them in the chat box and I'll try to address them a little bit later. Um, in the, um, once you lose your job-based health insurance um, due to the COVID-19 or for any other reason, you usually have two options to be able to uh, maintain health coverage. You can actually go into the federal um, health insurance marketplace or you could continue your uh, COBRA coverage. And we'll go over what COBRA coverage is a little bit um, later on in a few different slides. You do have options uh, to be able to continue to have health insurance. Um, and you have a 60-day um, time period to be able to still uh, get in once you lose your job-based coverage. Um, first option is the health insurance market plan. And, Ms. Jack, yes. can you show us your PowerPoint, please? I'm it's, not seeing it on the screen. It should be showing. It's not showing at all? No, ma'am. Let me see. Hold on. You probably have to click share and then click on the actual PowerPoint to share. I apologize. No problem. Because I'm starting it from the beginning and it's, it's showing up on my side. <clears throat> if we can't get it loaded, we definitely will email it out to the, all the attendees afterwards. If we can't get it working right, I apologize. I'm sorry about that. I thought it was actually working. I thought um, we were- It, it uh, definitely worked yesterday. It so. did, it did. Hold on. We apologize, everyone. Is it on now or no? I don't see it yet. Okay, let me see if I need to, um, let me try logging back out and logging back in. Hold on one second. We apologize, everyone. And like I said, if we're not able to get the PowerPoint started, we definitely will email it to everybody at the end of the webinar. If uh, what I can do, if Jack, if you want me to, I can load it on my end since I have it. Yeah, it, it may and work better. You can better tell me which way to advance the slide if you want to try that. Okay, we can try that because it worked perfectly yesterday. Okay.
Okay, I see you're loading the PowerPoint. I see it's up. Now we we got it. Yay. You're muted, Miss Jackie. Okay, can you all hear me now? Yes, ma'am. All right. You can see the screen and hear me now. We're back in yes, business. Yes, ma'am. Okay, <laughs> sorry. <you> <laughs> okay. All right. <clears throat> So now we're going to talk about the health insurance marketplace. I always think of the health insurance marketplace as like a shopping mall. It's actually a one-stop shop place where you can actually go in and shop for the policies that are available and pick which one that would be um, uh, suited for you and your uh, in your family. Um, Anyone can apply through, that's a U.S. citizen or anyone legally present in the United States can enroll in the health insurance marketplace. Right now, there's only two providers that are in there, um, which is Blue Cross Blue Shield and um, Advantage. Advantage is actually a company that was started uh, by some doctors up in North Louisiana um, over 20 years ago, and they've actually just moved um, throughout the more of the state now. Um, you can earn tax credits through the um, marketplace, which helps you to pay for your premiums. And it all depends on your household size and your um, income. And the marketplace pretty much adds that up for you. For um, like a household, let me see my, my chart real quick. For a household of four um, through the marketplace, you uh, you have to make less than a hundred thousand to be able to probably qualify for some kind of assistance through the health insurance marketplace. A lot of people do qualify for it, and it's able to help lower the cost of the actual premium. Also, depending on the um, your income and household size, you can also get what's called cost share reduction, which helps lower the um, the uh, premium and also lowers the uh, co I mean the deductible, I'm sorry, lowers the deductible and lowers the co-insurance that you would have to pay if you went to the doctor for a procedure. Again, all the policies through the marketplace do not have pre-existing conditions linked to any of them. So anyone is able to join without any kind of discrimination of any kind of past or current health issues that they may have. You do have to file a tax return when you do your, uh, you do have a marketplace plan because you do have to reconcile that because what you put on your application is based on what you anticipate on making for the current year. Most of the the time it is an estimated amount so people know because they have an hourly job that they've been at for a while and they know exactly how much they're going to get some people that are self-employed struggle with that a little bit because it's a little bit different but you can go in your marketplace application and readjust your income throughout the year and we highly suggest that to be able to um, start balancing out the tax credit because the more money you make the less tax credit you get and vice versa so you do have to reconcile your taxes every year to be able to make sure that you get the right tax credit that you're eligible for because it is your money that the a government's helping to pay for and you are entitled to that uh to that benefit um go to the next slide Um, if you leave your job for any reason or you lose your job-based insurance, you can buy a marketplace plan. Losing your job-based coverage, even if you quit or get fired, still qualifies you for what they call a special enrollment period. Um, a special enrollment period is anything outside of open enrollment, which open enrollment is usually November 1st through December 15th, and you have 60 days from the date you lose coverage to enroll in your health plan. Um, most of the time, you can still apply if you know that you're going to be losing coverage, say, like by June 1st. You can go ahead and apply now, and you wouldn't have a lapse in coverage. And so um, you could do it 60 days before or 60 days after losing coverage. And then that window after the 60 days has passed, you um, that uh, opportunity is now closed, and the marketplace will not um, open back up a special enrollment. 
there's special enrollments um, for other reasons as well, not just losing your job-based coverage. It's also if you move from another state. For instance, um, if you move from Texas to Louisiana and you had a Blue Cross Blue Shield plan in Texas, Texas plans are different than Louisiana and you would want to have something in Louisiana because uh, if not, then you would be paying out of network um, deductibles, which are considerably a lot higher than in network uh, policies. Um, you can fill out the application and it tells you your costs uh, right then, how much your um, out-of-pocket costs would be, how much your deductibles and co-insurance, co again, based on your income. And you have an option to use some of it. Uh, say, for instance, if you get a tax credit of $1,000, you can use all $1,000, you can use half, or you can use none. Um, and when you file your taxes, you would get that additional money back whenever you did your taxes. Um, because, it, like I said, it is your money, and they, um, they're just paying it on your behalf. But it's based on the income that you actually provide. When you do in a marketplace application, if you have like a family of four, it the marketplace application will automatically determine if like, for instance, the mom and dad stays in marketplace and the two children go off to Medicaid or uh, La Chip. Um, it will distinguish between that and it would all automatically send the application to the um, uh, Louisiana Medicaid uh, program to get that paperwork actually started. So you don't have to do both. You could actually do it all in one spot. Um, I know this is not covered in one of the power in one of the slides, but I'm gonna go ahead and cover it now. For the income portion of the um, for the marketplace, for if we we're having to look at everyone's individual um, income and household size individually and kind of start doing it beforehand to determine if they would qualify for Medicaid or if they're gonna qualify for the um, marketplace. Um, and reason being is because the additional $600 that people are getting for the unemployment benefits on top of their regular weekly um, like 247 or 250 whatever it is that you're getting that additional $600 is not counted towards Medicaid eligibility but it is counted towards marketplace to go towards your uh, tax credits on your application so we kind of have to look at it beforehand and kind of get a, a good um, just feel of how and where you would probably fall to know which kind of income that would actually um, you would actually put in. The marketplace application, from what we're understanding, you do still put it in, but it would actually um, take it out on the back end of the application to where you don't have to um, not report it on the application just in case it does go through to the marketplace plan and you are getting the correct tax credit because you wouldn't want to um, underestimate your income because if that's the case, you may have to wind up paying some of that um, tax credit back at the end of the year whenever you do your taxes. The next slide is COBRA insurance. For COBRA insurance, um, COBRA is just a continuation of your current plan through your employer health insurance. Um, it usually is for 18 months and um, some Companies do offer it, some companies may not offer a continuation of COBRA. Um, it, uh, you can get it by voluntary or involuntary uh, job loss, a reduction in uh, hours, or um, for like transitioning between jobs. Um, most of the time, COBRA is, like I said, an extension of your um, health insurance plan. So you would keep the same one that you actually have. You would just be in charge or responsible for paying for the full premium. Your company probably wouldn't pay their portion any longer. And you would also have a small administrative fee usually attached to it. So it can be kind of costly because I don't know um, if, you know, everyone's familiar with how much an employer actually does pay for an employee benefit to be able to have COBRA, but they do um, pay a good portion most of the time for it. And we pay a small portion, you know, as an employee. Um, you are entitled to elect COBRA coverage and you must elect it within a 60 day period of the, um, of 
they're losing your your coverage and that also applies to like the 60 day time frame for getting um, health insurance marketplace you um if you ever you have questions about COBRA, you would have to actually contact your employer and they would be able to guide you with what uh, the benefits or in the premiums or for the COBRA coverage for you and to continue that coverage for your health insurance. Um, generally through, uh, you won't, if you, once you sign up for COBRA, you usually cannot get out of COBRA until it usually ends after 18 months. If you voluntarily drop COBRA or fail to pay for the premiums, you, it doesn't mean you can get a special enrollment in the middle of the year. Um, that's not considered one of the special enrollments of losing um, like job-based coverage. It would, uh, COBRA is pretty much a little bit different where you kind of, locked into it for the year, so to speak, where you kind of um, need to make that decision before you choose COBRA, but you can um, opt out of it during open enrollment through the health insurance marketplace, which is, you know, in November when it starts. Um, you don't have to take COBRA. It's not mandatory that you do, but you should also try to find some type of insurance that um, that you can roll in, it's the, like the marketplace plan. And they do have some, you know, decent plans out there that are affordable once you put in all of your income information and see exactly what kind of um, uh, tax credit and, and if you qualify for the cost share reduction, if that all applies to you. I think that's uh, pretty much the end of our uh, this presentation part of it. I did want to touch on one other thing for the Navigators for a Healthy Louisiana. Uh, we do have um, a program called Team Viewer. So even though we are still social distancing and not being able to see anyone um, in person, we do have a program called Team Viewer. And Team Viewer is a, a, an app that you could put on your phone or I mean, well, it doesn't really work good on the phone, I'm sorry on your laptop and it actually lets us share the screen just like Zoom. Uh, TeamView is a little bit more secure because of the private identity information that is um, disclosed through an application and um, we can still assist you over the phone and if it's something that we have to call the marketplace uh, for, we do um, uh, we would do a three-way call with you to be able to guide the process to make sure that you have um, you know, you have all your questions answered and you're getting everything that you actually need. There was one other point that I wanted to make too that I forgot. Um, during this COVID-19 uh, pandemic, the marketplace uh, is allowing an ad additional time past the 60 days for um, what's called disaster uh, SCP. And that's, uh, that could be granted to someone if their 60 days had passed, if they were one, um, were uh, sick with the COVID-19 or if they were having to um, assist a, uh, a loved one that was sick uh, with the virus, or there could be another circumstance where the uh, marketplace would allow them to actually um, go past the 60 days and um, still be able to get a marketplace plan. Those kind of uh, situations, we'd have to contact the marketplace for approval and we'll be glad to help walk uh, anyone through that process if anyone needs uh, further assistance. Were there any questions in the chat box at this time? A question I have is, does the marketplace, applying for the marketplace, does that affect your unemployment benefits? No, it does not. It has nothing to do with your unemployment benefits. The only thing, like I said, whenever you, um, you would, there's a way that they've, uh, that we have to put in the income to actually show what you've made prior to the, uh, to the, you know, close of the businesses and people that have lost their job. There's an, uh, you, there's, so you'd have to put in your income in several ways, but it does not affect anything that has to do with getting, um, 
marketplace plan or Medicaid. It just would depend on if you fall into Medicaid, you don't put the $600 in. It act, The marketplace application actually pulls that $600 out of your income to be able to, because that's not going to be considered part of your income during this um, the to the emergency declaration once that is over i think that ends july 31st um where that ends um i'm not sure what would happen at that point like i said things change um you know not daily but weekly of um how they're handling this whole pandemic so we would cross that bridge whenever July came and we look at it and see what else they're going to do and what the marketplace or Medicaid actually requires us to report as actual income. Um, does the stimulus that you receive, is that also affected or does that affect uh, the benefits? The $1,200 that everyone received through the stimulus or if it was the $2,400, whatever you got uh, for that, no. It does not have to be counted either place, either on Medicaid or Marketplace. It's not anything that's reported um, as part of your income to uh, affect your Medicaid benefits or to affect your uh, tax credits um, as showing as income. Thank you. Um, if someone needs to apply, how would they go about doing it? Is it best just to call the toll-free number, the 1-800-435-2432? Right. You can contact us at uh, the number 1-800-435-2432. Um, if you need to, um, if you want to do the application, um, you would go to healthcare.gov and you could start the application. All that's really required is that you have to have an email address, that um, a working email address, and uh, that is usually considered your, uh, your uh, username. And then you would actually um, just fill in all the information. And when it comes to income, it gets a little bit tricky. And we can, you know, if you've already started your application, um, we, like I said, we have this, uh, the team viewer program that we could, I, you could share your screen with me and I could actually walk someone through it and explain what all of that means and they would know how to better answer it because some of the questions on the application can be a little bit tricky and they don't know if they should check yes or no or exactly how to answer that question and it could make a big difference in um if you qualify for an scp or if you um what kind of tax credit you get especially with the income information that is having to be recorded Okay, some good information. Um, Ms. Jackie, I wanted to know um, the navigators that that work with your agency, is this statewide? Is it for the whole state of Louisiana or is it just something that's regional? Well, we used to have uh, like 16 or 17 navigators all over the state. Now um, our budget has been reduced. Um, of like the last couple of years. And so now there's um, there's three of us and then there's we have Jacob as the, Jacob would still be our backup. We have Charles Rabelais that's in our Lake Charles, I mean, that's in our Baton Rouge. He works actually for Central AHEC. Um, and then we have myself, which my office is uh, here in Lafayette. And then we have Chris Bro, which is actually in our Lake Charles office. He's in the same office as Jacob. But we're all, um, if the 1-800 number that's actually on the screen is something that um, all we put on all of our uh, documents that if they call there, they'll actually filter them out to all three of us. And we're all available to help no matter if it's uh, someone from up north or if it's someone local, we'll help, you know, whoever it is. That's why we kind of have team viewer to help uh, with that. Or like I said, we can actually um, contact the marketplace on a three-way call and actually um, get the information or get the application done if we're running into some issues and it's not giving an SCP for some reason and the marketplace can fix those kind of issues that we may not be able to on our end. Okay, okay, good, good, good. Um, so 
Um, I had another question. Do you have to wait a certain um, enrollment time to get into the marketplace? Is there a certain enrollment period? The open enrollment for Marketplace is usually from November 1st to December 15th. And that would be for uh, policies for the next year. Like come this November, we'd be looking at policies for 2021. So right now, if you have an actual Marketplace plan, you're not allowed to change the plan uh, throughout the middle of the year unless you have a certain um, like a special uh, situation that comes up. There is times where, like for instance, if someone loses their job and they had a marketplace plan, the application going into the application and doing what's called a life change can actually trigger it to let you choose a different plan. And because of the fact that it may be a plan you can't no longer afford or you can't, um, you, uh, you can't just do it because you just don't like that plan because it doesn't carry your doctor. All of those things need to be looked at before you purchase a plan. And um, sometimes, like I said, it will allow you to change the plan throughout if you go in and do a, um, a life change on the application. It'll let you actually change plans. One other point is like losing coverage. if. For instance, it's like in the situation, you know, most of us are in now that we may have chosen a plan that was affordable when we had a steady income coming in. Now we may see that we can't afford that particular plan. My suggestion would be to actually go back into the marketplace, readjust your income, let it do, and maybe it'll give you a better tax credit that would allow you to keep that same plan at a cheaper rate by not paying the premium does not qualify for losing coverage. If you just opt out of not paying it because you can't afford it, that's not a reason the marketplace lets someone back in. Um, it's always best to just go in, do the um, uh, update your information, and then let the system, you know, do the work for you and see what it can do. And it may even offer you to choose a different plan. You may fall under what's called the silver plans and the silver plans are the ones that actually give you the cost share reductions and the lower um, um, deductibles and the lower co-pays at the doctor. So there's different options that we, you know, we can help walk someone through and make sure that they're making the best decision for them and their family. Now, I know in some cases you, you're able to, uh, to be able to get a plan in the marketplace because um, you do not qualify for Medicaid. Right. But in some cases, you're still unable to be able to pay for some of the medications and the co-pays and um, things as in that nature as far as like in the marketplace. Right. Is there any other types of resources that may be able to help someone that may be in the middle, that falls in the middle of that particular type of category that's kind of like in the cracks? Right. And there are some people that do fall into those uh, those situations. We, when I know we are, um, when we're actually going through the applications, we actually put in the doctors, put in the medications. If it's something that is really, really important to that uh, consumer to make sure that that medication or that doctor is on that network. Because like I said, going outside of the network, you could have a deductible that's a thousand dollar deductible, but then you would um, go on outside, it could jump to 6,000. And those are very um, scary because you want to make sure that you stay within network. As far as other uh, resources, I I don't know of any like off the top of my head as far as like being able to assist with paying for drug prescriptions. I'm sure there's other smaller plans out there, or other agencies that do have um, programs that help consumers pay for that. But for the most part, the marketplace um, doesn't have anything out there that uh, for us like helping to pay for those particular items. Most of the time, um, most of the plans on the marketplace are actually, if 
you usually have to pay your deductible. And I usually show them that, that if you go to the doctor, um, not for the uh, preventive services, all the preventive services are covered on all of these plans, like yearly exams um, for men and women. And um, like colonoscopies when you turn um, over 50, you know, there's different things that the policies do still cover that are at no cost because they're preventive services. Um, most of the plans on the marketplace, you do have to pay the copay before and the coinsurance before they actually assist you with um, paying for the, uh, paying for the uh, cost of that service and most of the time it's like if you most of them none of them pay for like if you have to have an x-ray or an mri all of those go towards your actual deductible um for the for the policies but i'm sure like i said there's i'm sure there's programs out there that may be able to assist with um uh like medications uh like needing for help with costs for medication, but off the top of my head, I don't know quite which ones those are. I know we have resources um, that can reach out and I can look further into that for you and get back with you and let you know. Okay, okay. Um, there is a question. Uh, the question is, is there any difficulties um, reaching you during, a, during the time due to influx in unemployment claims? and likely with a loss of job-based coverage? Would to be able to contact me directly? Yes, yes. or any of the navigators. No, uh, we, we are, um, we have non-traditional hours that if we have to help enroll someone later in the afternoon or the evening, I had one consumer I had to help. It was after five o'clock, which is perfectly fine. We, um, we're here to assist whatever needs y'all have. And so if you do need assistance or just have questions, please feel free to reach out to us. We'll be glad to assist you with um, any of your um, questions or help walk you through the application or just guide you to be able to make the right decisions and answer, like I said, all of your questions so you can be able to um, make the right choices, especially right now with a uh, health pandemic, we don't want anyone going out, going without health insurance. And as I said, if you don't want to have a lapse in coverage, you have to be mindful of when you actually apply for the marketplace. So the marketplace actually starts at the beginning of a month. Sometimes Medicaid will actually go um, and go back to the beginning of the month. If, even if you uh, join like by the 15th, they will go retroactive back but marketplace usually just goes forward. And so if we applied today, you coverage would not start till June 1st. So we always have to be mindful of that to make sure that someone does not go the whole, a whole month without having coverage. I have a question. Okay. Um, if you already have insurance, is it a good idea to check the marketplace to see if you can get a cheaper rate or a cheaper plan? Absolutely. And if so, when do you do this? Is this because you have insurance? Do you wait till the open enrollment or what? Okay, there's a couple of things with that. Yes, you do have to wait for open enrollment unless you um, lose your job-based coverage. Um, uh, like for like if you quit or they, you know, you get fired or whatever reason, that opens up an SCP through the year. Um, you open enrollment starts November 1st. I always, even if someone does have a market place plan. I always highly, highly encourage them to go back in and look at the, uh, go back over their application each year and look at it again and make sure that particular plan, even though it would roll over, that that's the particular plan that you actually want. I've had situations where they didn't realize the premium would had gone up a, a tremendous amount and they could not afford it. And after December 15th, you can't really change your plan for something else, you kind of locked into that plan for the year. Now, as far as updating your um, uh, application, or if you want to check it out to see if you would qualify, there is some guidelines that fall for job-based insurance. 
there's a form called employee coverage tool that we that you can get on healthcare.gov that actually walks you through what it wants to see is is your health insurance deemed affordable by your employer and there's a calculation um i believe it which your annual income multiplied and i believe right now it's 9.78 percent and uh or it might be 9.68 they changed it and after a certain time they were changing it back to 9.68. But there is a calculation you and you multiply that. I always divide that by 12 and that gives you your monthly amount of how much is allowed based on your income, how much you should pay for health insurance. Say for instance, that number, that calculation comes up to $300 and your health insurance per month at your employer is $325. Well, that is now deemed unaffordable. The 325 that your employer, uh, you're paying for your employer is deemed unaffordable because it's more than the calculation that what, what the marketplace is deemed uh, considers deemed affordable. So at that point, you can get a marketplace plan instead of your um, job-based insurance. If you opt to get marketplace insurance, even if, it, if your job-based insurance is considered affordable, but you opt that you want to get marketplace instead, you do not qualify for the tax credit if your job-based insurance was deemed affordable. So it's always very important that we check that if you are offered, and that is one of the questions on the application, or you offer job-based insurance. And if you are, it wants to know how much you actually pay per month. And it will do the calculation. And if you don't know like all the information, that's where that form on healthcare.gov, you give it to your HR department and they would actually fill it out and it has all the information that you would need to fill in that section on the application. Okay, good, good, good. Um, I did have another question. Um, it, it's regarding uh, the COVID-19. Okay. Um, I know that um, they were saying that if you were to get tested, that those that the testing was free. Right. But in regards to everything else, um, that falls under the insurance plan. Yes, it does. That uh, that's one of all of the testing is actually free, and all of the fees should be waived for that, no matter what insurance you actually have. If you have to have treatment because you are tested positive, um, you would have to contact your actual uh, provider, your um, Blue Cross Blue Shield, Medicaid, whatever the case is, and find out what your policy actually would actually cover. Because I believe that they were trying to get most of them to waive some of those benefits, but I'm not sure how many or what policies actually um, were allowing that to happen. I don't know if like Blue Cross was doing it and Vantage was not or vice versa or whatever, but um, you would have to individually call your uh, contact your provider to find out what what would they be covering if you're um, if you did you know fall sick to the uh, to the illness. Okay, so it would actually work as if you were um, sick under any other circumstances, whether or not it was like the flu or Correct. pneumonia or anything like that. That's correct. It would fall under, if it happens to fall that they don't pay it, it would actually, any out-of-pocket expense would actually go towards your deductible. And your deductible, um, you know, would, um, once you reach your deductible, then you, depending on the policy you chose, if you chose an 80-20 plan, then they pay 80% and you pay 20 after the deductible. So those are some of the things too that we explain and we show. And we show you know, consumers that, you know, just having a premium that may cost a little more, when you do the actual math for it, you might be paying more in premiums than you would by paying your deductible. So you kind of want to always tell everyone to, you know, do the math and make sure of what is affordable and what would cover you in case of an emergency. Okay. What about uh, those particular clients that, um, or particular uh, individuals that that get a, a plan and say, I don't typically get sick, so I'm just getting a plan just to get a plan. 
Those, well, those, it depends. It would probably just go toward, it would, be, however the policy is written, that if they had like a large deductible, say, uh, you know, three or $4,000 deductible, if they're not covering anything for the COVID, you would have to come out of pocket that first three to 4,000, whatever your deductible is, to be able to get the coverage. Um, and that also covered, you know, for hospitals as well, because, you uh, all of that is considered part of your deductible. But you do have a maximum out of pocket on the policy. That should be the maximum amount you should have to pay for any kind of health treatment throughout the whole year. And we usually show that to the consumer of exactly what that is. And most of the time, it's a little bit more than your deductible. Say like if you have a deductible that's 4,000, maybe your total out of pocket might be 6,000. And as an example, but, um, it depends again on your household size and income to know if you qualify for the silver plans, which has the lower deductibles, which I've seen them um, in certain circumstances as low as $600 that uh, people can use and the premiums were not you know, very high. So there is options out there. We just have to fill out the application. And if you do want to try to see if you, how you would qualify, there is a calculator on healthcare.gov and you go, when you go to healthcare.gov at the top corner where you could do search, do plans and uh, policies, and it'll bring you to that. And it'll ask you a few questions like um, the state you're in, um, your income, household size, um, a few other things, your age, and um, then it will show you, and it could also show you the policies. It's a just a brief overview, but we always tell consumers don't take that as the final word of what it is, because until you do the actual application, you put in all the documents and all the information on it, as far as income, all of the information to make sure you're getting the right tax credit. But you can get a sneak peek at what it might cost you by going through the marketplace. Okay. And if um, if they were to um, to receive the uh, the virus and they had uh, Medicaid, then everything would be covered under the Medicaid. Um, I'm assuming Medicaid. I don't know Medicaid's guidelines as far as how they are doing, but I'm I'm assuming if Medicaid. Um, it, it's a facility where you normally go that accepts Medicaid, um, then I'm assuming that Medicaid would be paying for it because Medicaid usually pays for all of the uh, services as long as it's within whoever takes, you know, their plans. And, um, you know, I'm not sure if all hospitals actually, you know, take Medicaid. I believe most of them do, but you would have to um, make sure that you would be going to the same facilities that, you know, accept Medicaid as one of their providers. Okay. All right. So do anyone else have any other questions for Ms. Jackie? If so, now is the time to ask. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, if not, this will conclude. I would like to thank everyone for attending our webinar. I would like to thank Ms. Jackie for her time. Thank you so much, Ms. Jackie. I appreciate you taking time out of your busy day and your busy schedule to, um, to come and give us this valuable information. Um, if um, anyone has any additional um, questions, you can always call our office at 337-436-257. Seven zero, or you can email us at info at fhfswla.org. Please complete the survey at the end of this webinar, and all documents that were um, that we went over today will be emailed to you. Um, so thank everyone for attending, and have a great day. Thank, thank you, everyone. You. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye.